Hi, we're late, but we're here. So you can join us if you're here, if you're on. We're coming on now at 2.30 p.m. We want to welcome you to Journey into the Word with J.P. Olson. Yes, we're coming on now. Welcome you to Journey to the Word with J.P. Olson. Bowing here, Bowing here, I find my rest. I find my rest. Without, Without you, Lord, I fall apart. And you're the one that guides my heart. That guides my heart. Lord, I need you. For those of you who missed me at one, we had technical difficulties, and now we're on, and we're just going to share, I'm just going to briefly share the Word of God with you, um, and then you can come back and you can watch. I want to welcome you. If you Earlier we had technical difficulties, and now I'm here, I'm on, and uh, I want to thank you for you joining me today. Hi, hi Lee from Ghana. Yes, I had problems coming on earlier. And so I want to invite you all today to join me here. You can always come back. Hi, Victor from Nairobi. Yes. So I want to thank you for coming back and joining me. Thank you, Pat. Good to see you here. Uh, we're just starting, and I'm just thank you for the hearts and the lights. I want you to know that we uh, we had difficulties earlier, and I thought, well, I'll just come on and just give you some uh, a little message for 30 minutes. And then uh, we don't have to, we'll meet you back here on Saturday. So I thank you again for joining me. Bless you with love and happiness. Those who have joined, I couldn't get the message out to everyone. That will be on at 2.30, but if you're on and you catch me, then great. Hopefully I'll see you on. Yes, hi Phyllis from Tennessee. I'm glad that you're watching me. Lord, we need you. So once again, thank you for coming back to join me uh, today. I just want to bless you today with love and happiness. And I have a message I think that all of us need to hear. And uh, and I pray that um, you will take something from the message today, okay? So we're going to jump right into it. It's uh, 2.34, so we're going to jump jump right into the message today. And again, if you're joining me and you came back and you see me now, that's because we had problems at 1 o'clock. So we have you here now. And uh, we're going to share with you what God has given me for today, okay? Okay, we're going to get right into the message and, um, yeah what God has given me today to share with each of you. There are things Christians forget when they leave church on Sunday, whether it's Sunday morning, whether it's Sunday evening. There are things we just forget. And, and it's just a constant reminder that God has to remind us of these things over and over again. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> Christianity has run into a problem, and it really has. Uh, we've gotten into the habit of putting our spiritual lives into a box labeled Sunday mornings only. Uh, that gets put back on the shelf the second we get home from church, okay? But we're not supposed to compartmentalize our lives into two different categories. We're not. Jesus and everything else in life. No. Instead, our relationship with Jesus should be the storage unit that holds everything else in place. Paul reminds us of this in Colossians 1, 9 and 10. When he says, we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way. Notice how Paul's prayer isn't to live only Sundays that's worthy of the Lord. That's to be easy, okay? That'll be too easy for you just to serve the Lord on Sundays. But that's what some people do. He don't hear from him but every Sunday. Instead, we need to live all seven days with the patience, the joy, and, and love that we do on Sundays. So without further ado, here's my list of the top ten things Christians forget when we leave church. The first one is patience. You walk out the church doors, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, 
There's plenty of light. And you know it's going to be a beautiful day. Until the cloud of misery called. The church parking lot traffic settles over you. What is that blue Honda doing? Why is the woman in the black escape just sitting there? Is that truck really letting another car go in front of him? You got to be kidding me. These are things we say. Because see, we done been in the church. Now we got the church. And we put the mask off. And here the real person come. No one likes sitting in traffic. Trust me. I get it. But there's no reason to let a busy parking lot steal the peace of the spirit that was abundantly poured out on you in church. Take a few deep breaths. If you have to count to ten. Thank God for, that your church has a thriving congregation. And recite some scripture. No telling the driver of that white Volkswagen to get behind me, Satan. That doesn't count. No, you need some patience. And when you pray for patience, be ready for this. You pay for, for, pray for patience. God going to do uh, send a whole lot of things. <laughs> go, that's going to test your patience. Oh, oh, my Lord, the refrigerator went out. The stove went out. Something's wrong with the car. He going to give you some patience. God's going to give you some patience. Hi, Linda from Perry, Georgia. I think Perry, Georgia. No, I'm sorry. You're not Perry, Georgia. You're from Georgia, but not Perry, Georgia. Forgive me, Linda. That's the lean for Perry, Georgia. And number two, I'm talking about, if you're coming on here late, I'm talking about the, the 10 things Christian people forget when they leave church Sunday morning. That's right, Canton, Georgia. When they leave church Sunday morning. We go in church wearing a facade. And soon as we out of church, that mask come down. And we start acting like everybody else. So the second thing is, the first thing I said was patience. The second thing is prayer. In my humble opinion, one of the best parts about Sunday morning is the prayer. Being prayed over by a pastor, praying together with friends is something that just fills my heart until it overflows. But so often our prayer life ends once we walk out the sanctuary doors. We're reminded to pray without ceasing. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, we're overwhelmed at the idea of spending 24 hours a day on our knees before the Lord. But prayer is just communication with God. And we can talk about anything and everything to Him. God is the creator of our lives and wants to be a part of it. And being a God who cares about the details, nothing is too small to share with Him. Number three, joy. What happened to our joy? I often pray, Lord, restore their joy. You get to work to see a pile of projects folders on your desk, each marked with urgent, and 72 unread emails, and somehow came in between 5 last night and 8 o'clock this morning. Doesn't anyone sleep around here, we say. You go to your first meeting, and your department isn't hitting its sales goals, and the pressure keeps rising. By the time lunch rolls around, you don't feel like you have an ounce of joy left. With the stress of work, or bills, or failed relationships, or illness, or anything else, it's so easy to forget that our joy comes from the Lord. It says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Nothing can take a single bit of your joy away from you when you place it firmly in him. Number four is service. I know, I know life is so busy between balancing work and family life and staying healthy and pursuing other goals. We've often left with no time at all. We get so caught up in all the tasks of day-to-day -day life that we forget that one of the best gifts we can give to others is our time. Here's a challenge. Try and serve at least one hour a week. It could be a church or the library or maybe a local school. It's a great way to live out your life as a Christian and to meet new people in the community. Plus, by willingly serving others, our heart becomes closer to God and we are in communion with Him. I think that seems like a great use of our week if we could just give one hour a week. Number five is love. Most of us have at least one person in our life who is difficult to love. Can I see some hands raised? Okay, and it's probably family. Maybe it's a person who is constantly making your day worse, causing you to curse under your breath every time you see them coming. Maybe it's the neighbor in the apartment, upstairs apartment, who you swear must have a nocturnal pet elephant or the coworker who always takes the last cup of coffee without brewing some more. How quickly do we forget that we are supposed to love the people who are hardest to love? Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, but I say, love your enemies. That's in Matthew 5, 44. Thank you for the hearts. I know somebody got some people's heart to love. So even if the coffee intern, hi Sharon. So even if the coffee intern takes the last donut and leaves the box on the counter every single Friday, we still need to show her love or him love. 
and maybe get to the donuts quicker than he does the next time. Number six, proselytization. And what is that? You say, what is proselytization? It's to induce someone to convert to one's faith, to recruit someone to join one's party or institution, or cause a transited bird. That's right, love them anyway. You're right, Linda. To recruit or convert, especially to a new faith or institution or cause a proselytization. For those of you just joining me, hi, Adelia. For those who are just joining me, we're talking about, and I'm just, I'm not going to go over all of them because I, I, I said 30 minutes, I'll be off. We're talking about things that Christians forget when they leave church Sunday morning. And I said that Christianity has run into a problem. We've gotten into the habit of putting our spiritual lives into a box label Sunday mornings only. That gets put back on the shelf the second we get home from church. But we're not supposed to compartmentalize our lives into two different categories. Jesus and everything else in life. Instead, our relationship with Jesus should be the storage unit that holds everything else in place. I talked about patience. I talked about prayer. I talked about joy. And I've talked about, I'm now talking about service. And so that means that you can come back on and listen if you miss those things. And now I'm talking about love. It's hard to love some people. But Jesus said, I say love your enemies. In Matthew 5, 44. That's right, the people attack me now, no faith. That's right, people attack you. And then I'm talking about proselytization. Okay, that's to induce someone to convert to one's faith, uh, to recruit or convert, especially to a new faith institution or cause that. What well, you said, lots of lab, you're Jesus, why I can tolerate it. That's right, Jesus, why you can tolerate anything in life. Jesus was clear when he sent the disciples out in Mark 16, 15. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. But we sometimes cough a lot of the times, forget to do just that. It can be a scary thing to talk to others about your faith. Many people are afraid of rejection or even just afraid of being in an uncomfortable situation. What happens if your daily chit chat with the desk worker at the gym turns to Jesus and then it's awkward from that point on forward? No one wants that. But the real purpose of our lives on earth is to tell as many people about Jesus as possible. Granted, it's best to have a relationship with those people, with these people first. But it's time to step out in bravery and talk to someone new about Jesus. Don't talk to the folks who say sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Okay, because you can't tell them nothing. Okay, because they're not going to go to the prison. And they're not going to go down in the cesspool to see where the prostitutes walking the dope dealers. No, they're not. So you need to talk to folks who don't know him. You need to do that. You need to be that one. Uh, that's what's wrong now. We all so holy than thou. We can't talk to people who aren't saved. Those are people we need to be talking to. That's why I often say, and I'll say it again. I'll say it again. If you want to, if all the people you know, the only people you know are Christian folks, you got a problem. Because Jesus, everybody was his people. Okay, you don't get to pick and choose. You know, I, I can't talk to those people. They're not saved. That's the problem. Go talk to somebody who's not saved. And help them to become saved. Offer them Jesus Christ. Tell them about him. Peace. And it's free. It's free to uh, tell people about him. The next thing is peace. The washing machine has caused a newly formed lake in your laundry room. The phone ring, and it's your son's school letting you know he's in detention for the third time. This week, and your husband walks in early from work, only to let you know he's been laid off. Life can just be that hard, okay? It can be that hard. Hi, enemy. I tell you, it can be hard. And the crummy part is God doesn't promise it will be easy. He doesn't promise us that. It's a power of a victor. In fact, the Bible frequently tells us we're going to have struggles and hardship. The Bible tells us that. And don't you worry about that, Delia, because folks try to attack you. You know who fights your battles. He fights your battles, darling. He said, vengeance is mine. So you just said, Lord, I can't handle these people in this group. You give it to him. And so we don't, the people who are believers, no. No, we just pray for those people. If the, if the people are the believers that attack you, you have to pray for them. Okay. God does promise. The one thing that God does promise is that his peace will always be available to us. 
He promises that. In the Bible, he tells us, he frequently tells us that we're going to have struggles and hardship. And then generosity. Your Bible study decides to break. Now, I'm going to just give you an example, okay, of generosity. Your Bible study decides to break bread together on a Friday night. So the 12 of you head out to a local restaurant. You take up the biggest table in the joint. Order four appetizers and 12 entrees during the three hours you spent chatting over Romans 8. At the end of the night, you cash out and end up leaving a $10 tip on a $200 check. Besides just being rude, you have missed an amazing chance to exemplify God's generosity to a hard-working waiter. He overheard you talking about God, and his interest was piqued. But your stinginess turned him away from visiting your church on Sunday. The situation could have been completely different if you left a generous tip. You know these people, got you got a $200 bill, and you're going to leave a $10 tip. No. Be fair. That's not being generous. You have some people leave a $2 tip. Number nine, the next one, number nine, is rest. Anyone else feel like life is just go, 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 go? Or face the consequences of being left behind? In today's fast-paced world, you may suffer from fear of missing out. What if you skip the night on the town with your friends and it becomes the night everyone talks about for years and years? You know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Stop being stingy and cheap. They have some sometimes they just wait for minimum. They they just waited for six dollars a minimum or whatever. Don't be so cheap. My husband just looked at me when I said that because I have to get his the credit card from him and, and do the gratuity and tip because he don't know how to tip properly. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> here we go. He and my dog just came in. You probably heard some noise because I'm late. They were trying to wait for me to finish, but I was late. What if you skip? Let's say this again. Rest. Okay, rest. Anyone else feel like life is just go, 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 or face the consequence of being left behind? In today's fast-paced world, you may suffer from the F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. What if you skip the night on the, out on the town with your friends, and it becomes the night everyone talks about for years? Or maybe you worry that your kids won't get any scholarship if they aren't in every club or on every traveling sports team. Or maybe you're working three jobs just to make ends meet. But God was so intentional with his creation. And that includes when he created a day of rest. God knows we're not indestructible. We need rest. Jesus rested. And being a good God, he created a time to be in restful communion with him once a week. And you wouldn't miss, and you wouldn't want to miss out on that. He said, come in communion with me and get rest. You got to, you got to take your rest. You have to get your rest. Number 10 is grace. As the week goes on and on, we start to become overwhelmed and quickly put too much pressure on ourselves. We want to be perfect. And perfect spouses, perfect parents, perfect friends, and perfect Christians. But we fall short of the glory of God. But here's the good news. God's grace is way more abundant than our mistakes. Hard to imagine, right? And if the God of the universe has grace for us, we should have it for ourselves, too. Remember, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, For it is by grace you have been saved. Once we live a life covered in grace, we will find ourselves having more grace for others. And I think we all could use a little more grace in our lives. I have to tell my husband to be quiet. I'm still on, on his speaking while he's moving around doing things. Thank you all for the hearts. Thank you for the hearts and the likes. So let's just go back and put everything in perspective. For those of you who came late, thank you for the hearts and the lights. We are talking about something that's very important. Because so many of us come out of the church on Sundays or whatever day you go. And when we come out, we got a facade on. You know, that covers everything up. And when we come out of the church, that facade comes down. Because now we want to curse out everybody in the parking lot that's holding the line up. Okay, we mad at why they waiting on this person? Why this person doing this? And even before we get to church, we mad because we set somebody to park that parking space. Or why somebody took two parking lanes. You know, I can understand that somebody taking two parking spots, okay? They do that intentionally, so you won't hit the vehicle. I know that game. But I'm telling you, we have to realize we can't put a, a, a Jesus in a box. That you just label it, okay, just Sunday only. No, seven days a week, because what did Paul say? Paul reminds us this in Colossians 1, 9 and 10, when he says we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way. 
Notice how Paul prays to live only Sunday. That's word of the Lord. That should be easy. That would be too easy if you just live for him on Sundays. But that's what we do. And then when Sunday comes around again, okay, let's get ready for church. But we ain't read no scripture. We haven't prayed. We haven't helped anybody. We haven't done anything since Sunday. And then as you heard me speak before, and sometimes Sunday is just another, another given Sunday for some people. They don't go to church to expect anything. They just go and go through the motion of what they go through every Sunday. You need to go to say, I'm going to meet Jesus. If don't nobody else get him, I want to get him. So you have to look at how Paul prays it to live only Sundays because that's worthy of the Lord because it'll be too easy for us. Instead, we need to live all seven days with the patience and the love and the joy that we do on Sundays. So without further ado, I was saying, let me just share with you. We talked about patience. You walk out the church, the sun is shining, the birds singing, and everything else, and somebody holding the parking lot of you mad. We talked about prayer, how you should pray often. But see, our prayer life ends once we walk out the sanctuary doors. We don't say another prayer until we get back on Sundays. The Word of God in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. We're overwhelmed at the idea of spending 24 hours a day on our knees before the Lord. Why? Because prayer is, but prayer is just communication with God. And we can talk about praying to Him about anything. Hi, Wilma. It's good you came on. We're a little late today, but we're here. I'm going to say that again. Prayer is just communication with God. And we can talk about anything and everything to Him. God is the creator of our lives and wants to be a part of it. And being a God who cares about the details... Nothing is too small to share with him. Hi, Jared. Great joining us today. If you're here for the first time, let us know where you are. We are family of Jesus Christ, and we're followers of Jesus Christ, and we want you to come back on Wednesdays just our passing through to give a word of encouragement to get through the rest of the week. But on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock a.m., Central Standard Time, the Chicago time, we want you to join us at 9 o'clock and get a full course meal and come to the table and be blessed with the rest of us. You see, I talked about joy. I pray many times, Lord, restore the joy in people's hearts because they've lost the joy. You know, like I said, things start happening. The stress of work, the stress of bills, the stress of relationship, the stress of illness. And it just takes away your joy. And then we're talking about service and serving others. You know, I know it's busy. I know life is busy. Trying to balance life and family and staying healthy and pursue another goal. And so we often left with time at all. We get so caught up in our days, we forget the one of the best gifts we can give to others is our time. I'm not talking about people that's invading your space and need boundaries. Or people that just, just want to gossip or wear your time. I know. You have to serve others. I think that seems like a great hour to use to help someone else. And then we talked about love. But once again, for those of you joining us, we talk, I'm talking about these the 10 things that we forget. And it's a reminder. And why I'm reminding you of this today, we're still in January. And God's trying to help us get on track. We're not going through each year the same every time. We're going where he's helping us. To better ourselves to be more Christ-like and not just taking Sunday for granted. If that's the day you worship him, uh, we come together on Saturdays. So you can have your Sundays, you know, at your church. But God say, worship me all the time. When you come out of the church, learn how to have patience. Carry the joy. Learn how to be generous. Learn how to serve others. Learn how to pray. Be patient. He tells us these things. Don't just do that inside the walls of the church. And then the word I use, proselytization. It's a word that means to induce someone to convert to one's faith. To recruit us to convert, especially to a new faith or institutional cause. But Jesus was clear when he sent the disciples out in Mark 16, 50. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. But we sometimes caught a lot of time forget just to do that. We're supposed to be disciples. But we get inside the church and forget what we're supposed to be doing. He made it clear. He said, go into all the world and preach. Some of us want to get discomfort inside the church. No. Jesus stayed. We walked and did his journey. It can be a scary thing to talk to others about your faith. Many people are afraid of rejection or even just afraid of helping in an uncomfortable or being in an uncomfortable situation. But it's okay. It's time today to step out and brave and talk to someone new about Jesus and get out of that circle of, I can't talk to nobody but believers. I can't talk about nobody, but just they got to be of my religious uh, uh, denomination. I can't talk. To, I can't talk to a Catholic because I'm a Lutheran. I can't talk to a Episcopalian because I'm Presbyterian. I can't talk to a culture because I'm Baptist. No. 
You get out there and talk to someone new about Jesus. Stop saying I only can talk to people in my circle. If you're not saved, I can't talk to you. That's the problem. The holy than thou folks. You got to talk to people who don't even know who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? You get the chance to tell them who he is. And then they wonder why I love to travel out of the country all the time. Because those people are hungry. They want to know about it. But we have to tell somebody. You just say, you know, do you know you have a relationship with Jesus? And just tell them about him. Invite them to come to your church. Invite them to come here and listen. You know, just invite them. Because the real purpose of our lives on earth is to tell as many people about Jesus as possible. We are, this year, as we came out last year, the Great Commission is accomplishing the mission of Jesus, simply sharing Jesus. And then have a relationship with, you need to have a relationship with these people first. Hi, Richmond. I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. If you're here for the first time, let us know where you're from. Because so we can acknowledge where you're from. We're happy to have you on. And we are a family here with followers of Jesus Christ. We believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is Wednesday is our just passing through. at one. Uh, well, we're supposed to come on 1 o'clock. We came a little late today. We had technical difficulties. But we're on every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. We want you to come. Okay, we're talking about peace. We're talking about generosity. We're talking about you getting a, you out of the restaurant eating. You got a $200 check. You're going to get the folks a $10 tip. No, you give them more than a $10 tip. And they don't do 10% tips anymore. They do 15, 20, 25. Okay, so you take one of those and do it. Be fair with people. And then number nine, we talked about rest. Even Jesus rest. You have to rest. You can't beat everything to everybody. Did you get that chance yesterday, Pat? But bless you, dear. Bless you, because I know how you will step out and help others. And then sometimes you may not even have the monetary. It's not all about that. Sometimes you got the service. You can help somebody do something. Number 10 was grace. We talked about High Cora. We talked about Michelle. We talked about grace. As the week goes on and on, we start to become overwhelmed and quickly put too much pressure on ourselves. We want to be perfect and perfect spouses, perfect parents, perfect friends, and perfect Christian. But we will fall short of the glory of God. But here's the good news. God's grace is way more abundant than our mistakes. It's hard to imagine, right? He said, my grace is sufficient for everything you need. And if the God of the universe has grace for us, we should have it for ourselves too. Remember Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 tells us, but it is by grace you have been saved. Once we live a life covered in grace, we will find ourselves having more grace for others. And I think we all could use a little more grace in our lives. <clears throat> and that's my message. That's my message. I got to the, to the 2.30 point, or should I say the 3 o'clock, started at 2.30. I got to the 3 o'clock mark in 30 minutes. I'm doing good. <laughs> and I'm sorry again. Thank you all for the hearts and the like. But just a reminder, these are things we need to remind ourselves. Worship Him and serve Him and be Christ-like seven days a week, 24-7. Don't take your mask off once you come out of church and then you ain't got no patience for folks. You don't have no love for folks. You don't have any joy in your heart. You're not generous to anybody. You don't have any grace. <clears throat> You won't get any rest. All of those things. You won't tell anybody about Jesus. You're not really showing genuine love. You don't really pray anymore. You just go and pray on Sundays. And then you're scared to pray because you haven't talked to them. I tell you all the time. You're in a relationship with somebody. Don't communicate with them. And see how, far, how long that relationship is going to last. Don't communicate with them. And see how long that, that going to last. That's what I'm saying now. I just want you all to know we need to go back to the basis. We need to go back to the beginning and say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all of that. When I leave by the church, I'm all of that. I don't pray. I, I don't have any I patience. I don't, I'm not generous to folks. I'm not trying to introduce nobody to Jesus. I don't really have any joy. I don't serve anybody. I don't really give out true love. You know, I don't have any peace in my life because, of, because I leave all of that in the church. Can't get any rest. You may say, I'm all of that. I need to go back to the basic, to the beginning of things so that I can learn how to be like I was at, in church on Sunday morning. That I can show grace and I can serve others and I can love people and I can have patience when I'm running behind on something if I need to help someone. That's, our, that's my message for today. And I, I had said earlier it was going to be brief. And I'm not going to hold you over. It'll be on the page. I'm going to share with some that miss it. I see I'm getting notices now from people who miss, say they miss it. 
but I'm going to tell them, no, I came on anyway. I just felt led to come on anyway and share it. And if you came on late here, then I want you to come back and watch it. If you're here for the first time, please consider joining us on Saturday morning at Central Standard Time at 9 a.m. And that's the Chicago time I'm mentioning. Uh, join us on Saturday mornings. The family come together. And when I say family, I'm not saying biological. I'm saying the family of Jesus Christ because we all have his, have his DNA. So we want you to be fed. We want, don't want you to be near, malnourished in God's word. So thank each one of you. I'm, I want to thank you. I'm going to uh, thank you who I have, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Linda Lee from Ghana. Linda from Georgia. Pat from uh, Middle Tennessee. Uh, let's see who we have. Lee from Ghana. Yes, Cora from Tennessee, Memphis. And I'm not sure where Richmond Timber Teddy is, I'm not, is from. Uh, Richmond is from Ghana. Okay, Richmond. All right. Thank you. Joining us from Ghana. Jared. I'm not sure where Jared is from that's watching. Thank you, Wilma's from Wisconsin and Linda from Canton, Georgia. Uh, Victor from Nairobi, Kenya. Anime from the Philippines. Uh, Dealey, I'm not sure where Dealey is from. Um, we're glad that you're, you're here. Uh, once again, Sharon and Linda and, and those who have joined. Phyllis is here from Tennessee. Yes, yes. So I thank each of you who joined me today. Uh, you can share this with others if you feel you know someone that need to hear it. Uh, there's somebody that need to hear this message. Uh, they, they forget on Sundays. They just, you know, do what they want to do. So I look forward to seeing you all here on Saturday morning at uh, 9 o'clock a.m. Come for your speeding. I love you. God loves you too. Be blessed and have a great day. Peace and goodbye.